Hi all, welcome back to my channel. When it comes to sewing machines, you've got a choice of um, methods of powering them. You've got pedal machines, you've got hand cranks, and of course, you've got electric. But which one's best? My name's Ollie, and this is Simply Stitchy, and that's the question that we're going to be answering in today's video. Do you want to go treadle or electric? What's the difference, and which is better? Before we actually get into the video, um, the one thing that I'm going to get out of the way first is stitch quality. Now a lot of people say that these older machines make far superior stitches to the modern electric equivalents. And whilst there is a certain amount of truth in that, the actual stitch quality that's produced by either of these machines isn't down to the way that they're powered. This one doesn't produce slightly better stitches because it's a treadle, and this one doesn't produce the stitches it produces because it's electric. The stitches and how they're made are down to other factors which is a subject for a later video. Today what we're concentrating on is the specific differences between being human powered or being powered by electric. So let's get into the benefits and the disadvantages of being people powered first. One of the first things you'll notice when you're sewing with an old lady like Grandma here or even with um, the Singer 15 over the back there, the hand crank, is they have a relaxing, melodic sound to them which just kind of takes away the stresses of the day. It's a bit like listening to one of the older trains as it clickety-clacks -clack, over the railway lines. It's quite it's therapeutic. It makes sewing much more fun because you're in control of the speed that it goes at. I'm kind of sitting at a funny angle here, so hang on a moment. There you go. I mean, you can just get carried away in that noise, can't you? Now, being in control of the speed that these machines um, can go at, this is the Singer 15. Uh, this one's actually uh, Roger Wilco from one of my earlier videos. I'll put a link in the description box below of the video that I did explaining about the RAF de decals that are on this machine and that's why he's got the name that he's got. Um, you can only really go as fast as how fast you can turn the wheel or in grandma's case how fast you can push the pedal. This means these machines are never going to run away with you. You are never going to be at a speed that you think, Ehh! which can happen with some electrics, especially some of the faster industrial or semi-industrial machines, which do 1,500 stitches per minute. It can seem pretty, um, pretty intense, pretty full on, and it can be quite intimidating. Whereas these, they're slow, yeah, methodical, they get the job done and you keep your sanity in the process. One of the things that you do have to be a little bit wary of with um, this treadle in particular, the, the Singer 27, and I know my hand crank Singer 128 tends to do it a little bit as well, is that they don't always stop moving when you want them to. It's something that I've complained about in some of my previous videos where I'll have stopped grandma and the needle's still up and I'll have taken my hand off the wheel and off the pedal and lifted the press foot and the needle will go down. It's not something that I've noticed the Singer 15 hand crank doing but it is something that is a bit of a pain on these. Um, I'll see if I can get her to do it, hang on a second. There you go. Did you see that? She just sank. There is a reason why that could be a bit of an issue with a treadle in particular and I'll take it down below so that you can get a closer look of why I think that could be happening. Join me on the floor for a minute. The culprit could be this rod here at the back. It goes from the treadle all the way up to this curly bit here that attaches to the band wheel 
and basically what it does is it changes the up and down movement of your pedal into the circular movement that makes the treadle move. Uh, now this thing, this rod, is called the Pitman Arm. Uh, if you want to know more about um, Pitman Arms, I have a video called The Anatomy of a Singer Treadle and I'll put a link in the description box below for you. But if I turn the hand wheel and you carry on watching this bit for a minute, you'll notice that if you get it in a certain spot at the top and then let go of the wheel, it kind of tips itself over the edge if you like. It's down to gravity um, and what happens is because it's it's not really balanced, it's balanced to a certain extent like there, it's at top dead centre so it's balanced but if you kick it off that and it falls off the other end it'll just carry on going and I think that's why sometimes grandma um, will carry on working and the needle will drop because it's that's where it is in its cycle. Now that doesn't affect the way the machine works, it's only really an issue if you happen to have your fingers too close to this bit um, and you haven't noticed that your pitman arm is the wrong side of its top dead centre and it's just about to flip over and move your needle down into the feed dogs. So the one thing that you've got to bear in mind with these things is you always keep your fingers away from that end even when you think it's stopped. Another advantage of the treadle machine and the hand crank is the one thing that makes them particularly popular with preppers and that's the fact that you don't need mains power to run either of them. If you're on um, an off-grid property for instance you can run these on the power of either your foot or your hand depending on which type of machine you've got. You don't need electricity and it's it's one of those things that's quite useful if you've got limited electricity, say for instance you're on solar panels and you have to watch how much um, electric items you have on at any one time. Having a person powered sewing machine means you can sew and not worry about the electric either not being there or not being strong enough to power your electric sewing machine. That's one of the reasons why an awful lot of treadles and hand cranks way back in the mid 20th century were converted into electric and have been converted back again. Another thing that you are going to have to bear in mind if you are thinking about getting either a treadle or a hand crank is the learning curve that comes with both of them. The treadle requires coordination skills between your feet and the top of the machine to make sure that you actually sew forwards um, and not backwards. The hand crank requires coordination between turning this and feeding your fabric through at the other end. It's not always easy to use just one hand to feed your fabric through. Um, it takes a little bit of practice. They're skills that can be learnt, they're not impossible, um, but it is a little bit like going from an automatic car to a manual car. Um, it is something that you need to be aware of, it is something that you will need to learn how to use these machines. You can't just get straight to a project and start to sew, you will need to practice with them first. The next power source we're going to look at is electric and it really doesn't matter if you're looking at a vintage machine or a modern machine because electric machines are electric machines. You switch them on, you push the foot pedal with your foot or the knee lever with your knee and they just go. Better still, when you've stopped, they stop. The needle doesn't carry on moving because gravity is moving the pitman on. It just stays where you leave it. Now it has to be said that they don't have the same kind of rhythmic hypnotising noise that the treadle or the hand crank has. They're efficient. They have the sound of a machine. You will find that these will go um, slightly faster because obviously they're powered by a motor which will work a little bit faster than a human. Now, 
again the one thing that I'm not going to get into in this video is the difference between electric machines like this one or the Singer 476 and computerized machines uh, the reason being because computerized machines are powered by electric the difference between these these are known as mechanical machines and computerized machines is again a subject for another video if you haven't already subscribed to my channel now would be a great time to do so by clicking uh, the little box below and ringing the bell because that way YouTube will let you know when I upload that video and others onto my channel so go on, click that link electric gives you the the speed it gives you the convenience of just being able to push a pedal or a lever or even in some cases a button um, you don't have to have the same kind of coordination skills as you do with the, the hand crank or the, cre the treadle they're easier to get going from the start because they're more they're kind of like plug and play you just sit at them and they'll sew so to a certain extent electric machines make sewing a little bit easier than the, the older antique or vintage machines like the hand crank and the treadle. So those are the differences, advantages, disadvantages of both a people powered machine like the hand crank and the treadle and electric. So which one should you be using for your sewing adventures? Well at the end of the day it's up to you, it depends on what you're looking for from a sewing machine. If you're looking for old world charm and a relaxing so a treadle or a hand crank could you be right up your street if you're looking for speed efficiency and uniformity and you're probably looking for an electric if you find that you're actually somewhere where you've got a limited power supply something like a treadle could enable you to keep sewing when your power's out, for instance. But be aware though that treadles and hand cranks, romantic they may be, they do have features missing. Things like push button buttonholes, things like a uniform stitch length. Now, if you find that you need the features that you usually find on even a basic electric machine, but you just don't have the power source to be able to run an electric machine. You might be better off looking at a hybrid. Janome is one of those companies that still actually make treadle heads. Now when I say treadle head what I mean is the actual top bit that sits on top of the machine. They don't make the tables that go with it. So if you go for a modern day treadle you'll get the features of an electric but the versatility of the treadle machine you will have to supply your own table though that is one thing to bear in mind now i've got a link to this hybrid uh, down in the description box below it is an amazon link because obviously i'm an amazon affiliate it's not going to cost you any extra all you pay is the price of the item um, but amazon does give me a little bit of commission on every purchase made using that link you don't have to use the link, you can actually just Google treadles and um, go and find this machine for yourself. But if you do use the link, it does help me out, it supports me, it supports this channel and it helps me carry on making videos for your enjoyment and it's appreciated. So thanks very much if you do decide to use it. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. And why not go and check out some of my other videos? there's some links coming up here or check out the ones that are in the description box below let me know in the comments if you've got a treadle a hand crank or even an electric and why you like using that particular machine that you use the most in the meantime thanks ever so much for watching i'll see you next time bye for now